Hear a squawk on this episode of The Pine Talk. Sullivan and Cannoli will share their stock of information to keep you up to date around the clock. Hello and welcome to the fifth episode of Pine Talk. The podcast for the Pine64 community by members of the Pine64 community. I am a Peter, just a real person doing a real comparison between Linux and Linux. And I am a Nezra, just an internet content creator. Is this the Pine tab? Hmm, clear screen. All winner A64 CPU? Whoa, fast. The community quote of the day today is by me. Something new we're doing. Ask not what the code can do for you. Ask what you can do for the code. Send in your quotes, and it may be picked and featured in the next episode. In this episode, we'll be discussing the Pine64 community update and some other topics, and we will try to round it up with some, some of your questions. But first, what have you been up to lately? Well, me. I've recently finished working on the code base of a project I've been working on for three years, slightly longer than desired. It's a fan game. It's completely written in C from scratch, from the engine to the game, though I did add Ren scripting for minigames and stuff. It's a point-and-click adventure that will be completely open source, so once the project is done... You may enjoy it if you like point-and-click games. So check it out. Cool. What about you, Peter? I need to ask you something first. Yeah, ask away. Uh, what is a fan game? Is that a game that fin spins the fan up on the computer? Or Of course. It's a... Uh, no, what it is is a, um, is a, is a game that I'm doing... Uh, uh, on a, something that I'm a fan of okay. in the, in, in this uh, context. It's about a series called, uh, Televoid from YouTuber Brutalmus. Uh, he made this, uh, very interesting series and I thought it could be turned into a, uh, an interesting point and click game using the, the, uh, characters and setting that he's created and the story that he's created. So, uh, I guess I'm showing my appreciation uh to the to the story and to his creation by creating my own creation for all to appreciate that's really cool and uh if i may ask because i'm old and not a gamer mm -hmm. what is ren scripting oh don't worry that's um basically it's a uh, ren is a is a is a pretty new scripting language i think it's pretty new uh and, and it's comparable to something like uh, lua so it's uh, easily embeddable into another program. Okay. And and Ren is just a very simple. It has a very simple syntax that's easy uh, to use, but I get to add my own uh, functions that will be called within the C code that okay. I've made. So in the game, I wrote a bunch of code to handle items, for instance, that the character can create. Well. In Ren, I can just call a function that adds an item to uh, to the character, and that's not defined anywhere in Ren code. That's all defined in C, but I can call the function and okay. it adds an item. That sounds great. Yeah, it's it pretty good. I'm proud of the, the project. Now, last question, and then I will s stop asking you and go on with what I <laughs> did, and you're welcome to ask questions there too. Uh, mm -hmm. Will it run on the Pine Phone? Will it run on the Pine Phone is a very interesting question because I actually feel like answering maybe in time because, uh, as I've mentioned once before in the past, I did manage to compile, uh, 90% of my engine, uh, in on the Pine Phone and got it running on the Pine Phone. And the only thing I, I didn't get running was, uh, the rendering engine. So if I did, 
use an older version of OpenGL and modified some of my functions. Uh, theoretically, I would just need to do that, and yeah, the game would totally run on the Pine Phone. Perhaps not well, because uh, you know, you may not know this. I'm not a great programmer necessarily, like to architect an entire game engine perfectly. Yeah. But uh, you know, it'll definitely be an interesting experiment for the future. So you know what? In conclusion, yeah, I, it it just might. <laughs> I I think it'd be a fun side project after the fact. Yeah, it sounds like you will be busy for the next three years, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got I got my work cut out for me. But yeah, uh, yeah. what uh, what about you, Peter? What have you been up to? Well, I've been very happy to see someone uh, joining me with the uh, LinMob Apps project to take over that game list, and that's uh, Mox Valex. I'm guessing I'm butchering the pronunciation here. But I'm very grateful for that help. So the game list is uh, maintained again. So check it out for Pine Phone Gaming. Uh, but I've also done some things on my own. And uh, among these things is that I've reinstalled my laptop with the pre-release Fedora 34 workstation. And I've been enjoying GNOME 40 since. And... I'm recording on this machine right now, so it seems to be running well. That is excellent news, I have to say. And and uh, you have you haven't had any issues so far? Uh, no, not yet. I mean, I'm missing some of the extensions I'm usually using, so I'm not heavy on GNOME customization, but I'm always using Caffeine. So that I can, uh, when I'm at a place where that is applicable, just make it so that the screen doesn't lock and stays on. Because it's mm. so annoying to just uh, go away briefly, uh, I don't know, maybe make a little bread and uh, then sitting down to eat it and you have to enter your really long password again. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I'm sure that uh, will all come back eventually. And yeah, that's that. I think that's pretty cool. I, I'm pretty excited uh, myself to 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 give GNOME 40 uh, 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 a look, but I, I'm gonna have to wait until I get myself a a new graphics card because uh, right now I'm uh, I'm rocking the uh, Nvidia Quadro FX 1700, and uh, it's having some issues running uh, to any. Any okay. anything that has any type of advanced graphics, I'm actually running i3 uh, just to avoid graphical issues. <laughs> okay, that sounds quite bad. I tried. I tried everything, I, and everything just has visual glitches. I've tried so, GNOME. So tried... Nouveau didn't really do a good job. No, indeed, I'm running a uh, yeah, you know, <laughs> Nouveau. Uh, graphics well you know it, it tried and that's what's impressive uh to me is that uh, it i mean because because i'm just, there's a part of my brain that's still used to like i don't know the when being on windows and like if i were to just take out a gtx 1070 and replace it with the nvidia quadro fx 1700 yeah. it would have caused so much headaches to just get something to display on the screen normally but like I just swapped that out. It said, "Oh, you know, like you know, it just ran out of the box." I guess is what yeah. I'm trying to say. And I, th I think that's that's the Linux experience. If you yeah, the Linux experience old enough and not totally out out there, it will usually just work. Or if it doesn't just work, you will have a hard time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? That's the experience, isn't it? That's the experience. And, and I'm I'm happy to say though, like even if some desktops were having uh, some hard time. Some hard times. Uh, I am able to like run. Uh, I've been playing a bit of Celeste recently, a platforming game, and it has some uh, 3D menus, and all of that ran like perfectly smoothly. So I was in a way impressed because I wasn't expecting, I guess, anything to work. <laughs> so great, yeah. great. Gnome 40 sounds sounds good, but graphically, slightly graphically 
uh, intense. I still need to test it on something else that I've got now, but uh, yeah, we'll get to that later. So yes. let's start with the community news. And this time it's really mostly community news. We don't have much interesting news, as I figured we should call that other news um, <laughs> in this here because, um, well, another March update, or not another, but a March update was published. And so we're figuring, we're figuring, well, what should we discuss of this update? And we got some questions and we'll try to answer at least some of them. If not, and if you've got follow-up questions, please ask us on Twitter, on Mastodon, or via email. Uh, we'll tell you those later. So let's start with our favorite product, right? The mm -hmm. Pine Phone. Well, uh, there's going to be, after the end of Community Editions, there's going to be the Beta Edition. And it's going to ship with Mandrao Plasma Mobile pre-installed. And it will be on sale since the 24th of March when you're listening to that. We are recording on the 23rd, so, so we don't know whether this will actually happen, but we are very positive that it will. Because Indeed. of something else we'll get to later, there's one sh different ship in there, and that's the magnetometer, the compass, and, uh, well, we've, uh, we will link the, sh the part numbers. <laughs> so it's not LIS3MDL, but AF8133L, basically. Um, yeah, uh, whatever that means, but it's uh, a different part, and that appears to be, if I'm parsing uh, Lukash' explanation correctly, that it may, be, may have worse mainland Linux support. So that's kind of sad, but uh, uh, honestly, I'm just glad that they found a chip so that they uh, can make these and that uh, I will no longer see people on Twitter being like, well, there's no Pine Phone to buy. What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> that really <laughs> made me very tired and sad seeing that all the time. Perhaps there could be like uh, a, a better explanation on the front page of the website, but uh, you know, there, there's a bit of, of jumping to conclusions <laughs> that are, that is done by, uh, with some people. I mean, sometimes you just have to vent. I get that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do that too, but I try to do it uh, not on social media. Mm -hmm. I just um, destroy things. Yeah, stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> just keeps it internal. <laughs> yeah, you know. I've got a plan that I can torture. So I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> that would be awful. <laughs> Otherwise, what did you think about uh, the new uh, box design that the Pine Phone uh, is oh, going to come in? Yeah, it's um, uh, um, it's a little bit boring, maybe, but uh, honestly, uh, boring is sometimes good, and it's maybe a sign of maturity. So mm -hmm. uh, it's less bland than the Braveheart Edition box was, which was very basic. Mm -hmm. And so it's in a way if we take Braveheart and the community editions all have their own flair. And this one just is an well a development or an evolution from the Braveheart box, maybe in my view. If you <laughs> if you're thinking about this <laughs> as um you know part of Pine sixty four design history. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, I think it's fine. What do you think? Well, I, I agree with you that, that it's definitely bland, uh, but uh, I, I like a bit of um, definitely a bit of, of playfulness with uh, with designs too. Like uh, my favorite case so far is the uh, Manjaro Community Edition one. There's something about the fact that the Manjaro logo logo itself had a uh, circuit boards. Uh, on it and that on in the background there is these uh an array of icons yeah that were cute they kind of showed a bit of uh the the pine phone and the two things that it's really trying to achieve you know it's very technical and you can really get behind there and and get things working and program whatever you want but 
you know, there is also cute icons to click on and there's work being done to make it a normal phone, if if I can say that, like a normal phone experience. But it's definitely a a good mix of both in the end, I think. And the Manjaro logo for me is is what shows that the most. So if they could do something um, along the same lines, get inspired, uh, you know, uh, we mean for the final, final Pine Phone final edition. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Pine Phone Um, custom edition. (laughs) But for the moment, uh, I mean, it's not the box that's that's that important either. You know, you buy you buy the phone because you want the phone. That's right. Yeah. I've been thinking, you know, that Manjaro box, It oh, I, I know that what it shows, but I, I, I never got a Manjaro community edition, so I, I've never seen it in person. Hmm. Uh, and it always, on thumbnails on, on social media, it looked to me like the circuit board was drawn, uh, looked like a pencil drawing, you know? Uh, uh-huh. So it looked really differently on thumbnails. I was always like, okay, they draw that and they didn't do a good job. You know, like like <laughs> Kit would <laughs> pencil that out, uh-huh. and uh, that was funny. So my favorite box actually is, well, it's tough. I I really like the two last ones, although I haven't seen those in person. And then uh, I st- I'm still very fond of the Post Market OS uh, one mm-hmm. because that had some source code on it. I think it might have been PM Bootstrap source code. You know, of there are tools that you can use to build packages and install it to phones and so on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So that was quite cool, I think. But yeah, yeah. yeah Tell us sure, what your sure. favorite box is, by the way. Do yeah, that. We'd love to do know. it now. Don't wait because you'll forget it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay. So and because I said do it now, I'll I'll now tell you how to do that. You can tweet at us at <laughs> TalkPine. Uh, you can toot at us on Mastodon at talkpine at fosterdon.org. Uh, you can use the hashtag Pine Talk. You can get into our Discord on the Pine64 Discord server. It's called Pine Talk Podcast. Or you can write us an email to pine talk at pine64.org. The Postmarket yeah. OS box is, uh, is busy, though, with all the source code. Yeah. Yeah. Bit busy. That's right. <laughs> that's right. I like busy. I like busy because I'm always busy. I mean, of course, that's <laughs> you are that's, always you know, busy. <laughs> we are. We are really the the box and I. We we share a life. We are always busy. <laughs> yeah. Let's continue with the good news. So, Pinebook Pro is also going to be available again, but only with an as a n s i keywords or ANSI keywords, so that's mm-hmm. uh, I think uh, the American layout, right? Not ISO, ISO, mm-hmm. and I think uh, there was talk about a price in, in, in about an increase in price. Uh, I think we don't know how much that will be, but yeah, that's this. Uh, component shortage we'll talk later about Mm -hmm. and uh, i already saw a question that was asking us whether it would be possible to switch keyboards later on i guess that was another european person like me and uh, yes it is um we found one video on youtube detailing that pro process so you can just watch that to see whether you could figure that out out on your own, whether you could do that. We believe in you. Yeah, you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> or you just keep waiting. But yeah, waiting is not fun. <laughs> it's fun. In other news, uh, there's uh, there's some updates for the Pine Time. Something we are both yet to receive. Just like you, we wait. Um... <laughs> But yes, there. This I was still quite quite interested, and I'm interested in generally in, in the Pine Time, uh, like its price and, and and what it can do seems quite astonishing to me. So there's a um, a uh, a new boot loader, 
that is taking steps towards ensuring that it works correctly and that uh, the <laughs> upgrade procedure itself is as safe as possible. Sorry, I laughed there because I just said that <laughs> that they're taking steps that it works correctly. Not that the old would load or didn't, but yeah, they're fixing bugs. They're making it more stable and uh, they're making yeah progress. Uh, otherwise, uh, Infinitime has an update. Infinitime 0.14 called Green Avocado brought <laughs> the first UI update of Infinitime, which is pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> Joaquim, I'm not sure how to say that. Joaquim. Sounds right. Did an awesome work updating LVGL, the open source graphics library used for Infinitime, which Upon my own research, LVGL uh, seems really cool. I didn't know about about this, um, but uh, with what I with what I've seen, that's really going to enable for Infinitime to have uh, quite interesting uh, graphical uh, effects without being too uh, too heavy on on the hardware. Because as we know, uh, the the Pine Time doesn't have the most advanced uh, hardware in it, but it's pretty pretty cool. I always like doing more with less. It's it's interesting. Definitely. It's a totally interesting and we'll put a link uh in there of uh an uh, post about LVGL and how it can be run on the Pine phone. It's a bit older and uh you may have read it back then, but maybe it's interesting. Oh, for sure, for sure. Finally, we have uh, Wasp OS that uh has also seen a new release and is now supported by Gadget Bridge, the Android companion app that allows you to communicate to your Android devices without the vendor's closed source application and without the need to create an account and transmit any of your data to the vendor's servers. Now, the name of the application pushing a notification uh, and the full text message is displayed in the notification app in Infinitime. Did that make sense, or did I skip a sentence? I think that, that made sense. sense. Yes. Yeah, Gadget Bridge is a Gadget Bridge is a great app. I've been using that uh, with Android uh, with my good old Pebble Time Steel watch mm -hmm. uh, for a long time, and it's been really solid. It's simple enough but powerful at the same time and just great to have, especially if you've got, I don't know, one of those Xiaomi Mi Bands or stuff that have these apps that are really, uh, that really may be transmitting some data back to Xiaomi that you don't want to go there. Mm -hmm. uh, Gadget Bridge is really great for that and it supports Good. a lot of devices. Um the Pine Phone equivalent of that app would be currently because of it supports so many devices. Would be um, oh god, I'm blanking on the name. A MS Fish. M A M A Z Fish, mm -hmm. uh, which is originally a Sailfish app, but uh, can be run on Plasma Mobile and also Fish. That's fine. Developed by Adam Pick, who's porting Sailfish OS. To the Pine Phone, among other things. That's good to know. Uh, uh, that's a quote. It, we love our amazing fish. Yeah. <laughs> I um, I can say quickly too. Um, uh, I will leave links to uh, Gadget Bridge and uh, Amaze Fish. Yes, uh, you'll do that. And. Uh, I think a part of my fascination, if I may uh, interject uh, another <laughs> slightly short personal story, of course. I, I, I think my my um, my fascination with the with the Pine Time and its very limited uh, hardware and doing uh, less with more for me is the fact that um, when I was in high school uh, and they passed us these uh, graphic calculators. Uh, the ones, the ones with like a Z80 processor in it. It, it was super. I, I thought it was super cool because it was more than a calculator. It had a full fledged processor on it, and it had a way you could program <laughs> on it using some old uh, programming, uh, like a basic 
TI basic because it was a TI uh, calculator. And, uh, like, I used to program all the time on that thing when in school instead of doing the math I was supposed to do. And I wrote <laughs> things, <laughs> I wrote things like, uh, like I wrote a, a 3D uh, renderer, for instance. And I thought that was super cool because, like, it wasn't designed at all to do 3D graphing. It was only supposed to do 2D graphing. And, well, I took that as a challenge. And and I did it. And I was like, you know, heck yeah. So there's a part of that that I look at these cheap $20, $30 watches. And it's like, you, you compare the price to that to, like, some of the other normal smartwatches. And it's like, anybody can afford that smartwatch. And, like... If you, or I think you were telling me this, like you look at like demo scene, the demo scene scene, <laughs> yeah. people, people who just write beautiful mathematical structures with so little code that run on anything. Yeah. And I find that impressive and very, very interesting. I don't know about you. Oh, I totally agree. And I think it's. If you want to learn something about computing, this is really uh, a nice task to learn something new, even if you're usually, I don't know, maybe developing applications or something. This is something really different and might be, uh, well, enlivening or something, <laughs> to use mm -hmm. the term out of the advertising industry. If you game, you know settling into your battle station feels enlivening. <laughs> yeah, so that's really something. Talking about enlivening, um, Chris <laughs> McGee has managed to enliven or enable his Pine Cube for use as a webcam. And he's shared his findings on Twitter. So it's software encoding it's just all mjpeg and raw and it streams fine in 720p and if you want to know how to do that uh, he put the instructions to do so in the wiki so that you can just uh, follow what he did and um, well maybe if you've got ways to improve that you can edit that in there and i think it's really great when something and information like this lands on a wiki, especially with a device where enabling is still in the earlier stages, I would say. Mm -hmm. right, you were really interested in the Pinecube as well, weren't you? I I, I was really interested. Uh, something about uh, just an open source uh, security camera that, I don't know, it had everything you, that that I see on a normal, you know, security camera, Ethernet, yeah. and a whole system on board, and it, it had any, everything you want except for, I guess, the operating system. <laughs> um, yeah, and, and yeah, I'm definitely, I was definitely interested, but it seems that I'm not the one who received one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's funny. Yeah, I. Uh, well, we we let's explain that we both mm -hmm. wrote little lists to Lukash when we started this because he was like, "Hey guys, uh, so if you do that podcast, we will uh, send you something. Just give me a list." And well, uh, turns out uh, I received uh, a pine cube, among other things, uh, which is something I um, actually never really was interested in, uh, but. Uh, I honestly, I just made a decision, you know, that, now that I have it. And <laughs> I've been, I've been thinking of sending it to you, Ezra, but well, that's really intercontinental shipping, so mm -hmm. difficult. But I would be willing to do it. So you can still uh, ask me for that. But I will try to do what Chris McGee did here and. Um, then use this for my next uh, PinePhone live stream. Because mm -hmm. uh, if you've watched any of my streams, you'll know that I've been using uh, a terrible old PlayStation iCam camera to point at myself because that was like the only kind of webcam that was available uh, like uh, a couple of weeks into the pandemic when everybody had bought all those webcams. And yeah, I should replace that with something nicer and 
now that the pine cube can do 720p it's definitely nicer than that crap shoot thing i used there so uh, i will try that mm. i will actually try That's that great I'm 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 glad I'm glad to hear that. I'm really excited to uh, to yeah to to see it in action. Uh, as much as I do want to play with uh, one myself, I do also enjoy your suffering uh, of, of, of having to play with something you didn't even ask for. Well, it's it's uh, really uh, not suffering, honestly. I mean, as as soon as you found a project that mm -hmm. seems do doable, because there are instructions out there. I think mm -hmm. it's then it's well then it's totally fine, right? Mm -hmm. But I, I got it and I was like, well, I don't know what to do with this. <laughs> I was even <laughs> thinking about uh, giving setting it up and giving it to my parents, and then I looked at the wiki page of how to set it up, and I was like, okay, uh, no, that's not gonna <laughs> work. <laughs> But yeah, uh, speaking of webcam shortages, um, that's I think good segue to component shortages. A topic which was re requested by Dank12, uh, the guy behind Danknix, the awesome Arch Linux ARM distribution I still use. I've been meaning to switch, but I just can't do it. Um, and Thanos, the tank engine in Discord. So the community update uh, has a pretty good analogy that Lukash found. And it's, do you remember the toilet paper and hand sanitizers shortages at the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic in the West? It's like that, but with transistors, PC phone parts, and silicon. And that's basically what's happening. And it's the same behavior that some people have hoarded. These components are selling them off at higher prices now uh, to those that need them. And well, it's really a, a crisis that developed in the industry over the past month. I think there were uh, headlines about this in February already about a silicon chip shortage that's uh, causing automakers to uh, idle their factories. So they had basically to stop production because they couldn't get the ships they need for their cars. And that has since accelerated to phones and game consoles and even Qualcomm, who are, let's just put it, huge. They are in, well, what at least it feels like in most of the Android phones out there, have trouble uh, getting the resources they need to produce their ships, right, and get them out of the door. Mm -hmm. So this is really pretty bad. and. I mean, there's no, uh, we don't have any information on this, but I, I know that many people have been asking about the Pine tab and when that's coming back in, into stock. And I guess, uh, well, that's also affected by the component shortage. So, yeah, displays were, by the way, displays were pretty early in taking a price hike because of uh, laptop production. And yeah, now sh that chips are in shortage, uh, it just gets more and more difficult, which is why I'm extra glad that uh, the Pine Phone and the Pine Book Pro are going to be back in stock or mm -hmm. going to be back on sale. Right. Mm -hmm. Are currently on sale. Yeah. Uh, well, the Pine, Pine Book Pro isn't, right? No. <laughs> This is published. <laughs> And yeah. What Pine do you Pine. think, Ezra? I think people should stop freaking out. Yeah, stop freak out, people. Just panic. <laughs> Just panic. Do um, like your kernel sometimes does. Just panic. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know. Well, one, Lucas is. I think that 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 was a great analogy to, uh, you know, that that it really is just like the toilet paper thing that like. When there's none, when there's none left, there's none left, and yeah. it's going to come back in time. Like we, I think we all know that that all of this is happening because of the pandemic, and it's making everything more complicated. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, it's going to be better. Yeah, it's going to be better. But then again, we don't know how long it will take until it's going to be better again, because 
the thing is these supply chains are quite complicated and mm -hmm. according to the economic theory i had to learn during my studies uh, it's basically that all this is based on the expected demand mm -hmm. so in a crisis producers are like well i don't know whether i will sell my stuff and so they basically sent their staff home and shut down production or reduce production mm -hmm. and then when it turns out okay this crisis isn't affecting this branch then they have to uh ramp it up again and that of course takes some time and even if they are fast at that the thing is that they always are part of a supply chain so they buy stuff from someone else and sell it on to these and it happens in all these um all these elements of this supply chain and so it's a bit like maybe a traffic jam right when there's a traffic yeah. jam and cars and and you're you're at the end of it then you can ri drive again but it really takes some time and you don't always know sometimes there's a jammed up traffic a few kilometers from there again because people can't drive mm -hmm. so it's all this uh latency that's added in there and that's making things really tough to prognose so i don't think anybody can tell how long this is going to take i mean there may also be shortages in just raw materials like uh where can we mine uh i don't know maybe lithium or some some element that's being used in production so there's uh, a lot of going into this and it's uh, tough to say when it's going to be fine again but eventually uh, eventually it better be fine again <laughs> I mean, I think the industry is going to have to find out something. Someone is going to see this as a business opportunity on, okay, how can I get silicon back in the market? Yeah, but the, the point is that that is usually pretty hard to set up that business. And that always takes time. And it's really risky because you never know whether the other producers that reduce their uh, output before won't be able to uh, put uh you know get back to capacity capacity before you do that so uh it's it's uh really really tough I i'm think. sure i could do it yes like those we are glasses <laughs> exactly <laughs> it's just i'm so busy you know yeah 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 yeah. Sorry, everyone. By the way, <laughs> while you're waiting for the pine tap, a uh, quick shout out to two content creators that have been creating some pine tap content lately, and that's Linux Launch and Privacy and Tech Tips or RTP. Uh, just uh, watch their content. I think it's quite different. Uh, Privacy and Tech Tips is really nerdy and goes into stuff like software defined radio and so on, which is quite interesting. And I've enjoyed these videos uh, quite a lot. So uh, give them some views, maybe. We'll link their channels. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, after we already talked about the Pine Cube, I have, uh, we are ending the news segment and we're going to something, uh, well, what else happened, I'll call mm -hmm. it. And um, in this segment that will be in this fifth episode and may come back or maybe not uh i'll talk about my rock pro 64 which i had asked for and received luckily so uh yeah i had this for a while but i i didn't really get to play with it uh for quite some time because i was like ah, i don't have a case um because well the big uh, network attached storage case is a separate shipment usually mm -hmm. and i don't know maybe i will get some maybe not so i decided to just buy a rock pro 64 premium um, aluminum casing uh, from my own money and i bought it on uh, the amazon marketplace and was uh, quite a bit more expensive than if i would have bought it from pine64.com directly but 
then again, uh, I figured it would be faster and I wouldn't have to deal with customs and yeah. So I have that case. I can tell you it's pretty nice. Uh, I, it's tough to say which, uh, what I would compare that size to. Maybe a really big box of cigarettes or even a really small box of cigars. Maybe a pencil case of short pencils. It's, uh, well, just look up the measurements. Uh, I've posted some, uh, size comparison photos of this case with Rock Pro in it and uh, my uh, Raspberry Pi 4 which has a metal cooling block on it too so they look kind of similar both metal and black and uh, well the Rock Pro 64 is a lot bigger I can tell you that um, but it's really well made and uh, Screwing this together was really easy. Pro tip uh, to everybody who's also getting uh, some EMMC chip for this thing and the EMMC flashing uh, dongle, if you want to call it that. Um, while you're still experimenting and distro hopping so, and con uh, assuming you've got a spare SD card, a spare micro SD card, don't use the EMMC, just use the micro SD card because that's uh, making disk dropping very easier because otherwise you will have to open uh, these uh, one, two, three, four, uh, 12 screws, I think it are. 12 oh. screws uh, all the time when you want to refresh your EMMC and that's just not fun. So, yeah. Uh, with the SSD uh, or with the SD card, and, and once you find one that you're happy with, then you can uh, go through. That's what you're saying. Exactly. Yeah. Just just try it out from the SD card because the boot order is like that. That it would always boot from the EMMC first and the SD card second. Mm -hmm. uh, in theory, I think there may be some bootloader project. I really didn't have the time to go into that into detail. I just tried. Uh, three distributions until now and that two of them were Manjaro one with Manjaro KDE the current release which is well quite nice uh, I have to say that the only reason why I didn't stick with it uh, was like I want to try something else and the other reason was I don't like that green what have they done to my beloved breathe theme <laughs> um, but uh, yeah that's just a Peter issue I think <laughs> or Sullivan, as I was called in the introduction. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, Manjaro Sway also is quite nice. Sadly, the latest release uh, didn't bring a Manjaro Sway image, so I had to use an older one and then upgrade that. That went uh, mostly fine. I think there's one part of the configuration that has be has to be adjusted. Uh, Sway, if you don't know, is basically i3, but uh, for Wayland. And it's uh, using the WL Roots framework like uh, Fock and Fosh do. So in a way, it's uh, a little bit familiar to what we're using, what you may be using on your Pine phone. And Twister OS. Yeah, and then TwistOS, because people <laughs> were like, hey, TwistOS, we had that uh, in the feedback, I think, of the last episode, right? And then uh, people piled on on library, I think, in the comments. They were like, hey, <laughs> yeah, TwistOS, you need to try that. And so I did. And yeah, it's um, I tried the Ambient variant. There's a uh, variant uh, that's based on Manjaro. But I figured, like, hey, let's try something else. So I went with Ambien. That was Ambien Focal. So that's uh, the Ubuntu variant of Ambien that this is based on. And TwistOS is really special in a way because it brings a ton of stuff pre-installed that you otherwise have to hunt around for. So there are many emulators pre-installed. There's Discord pre-installed. Um, 
The desktop, by the way, is XFC and it can be customized to look like basically every version of Windows I remember. Mm -hmm. But then, uh, yeah, I don't like Windows, so I didn't do that. <laughs> I didn't even test it because I was like, nope, no way, Jose. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so Discord, emulators, then Box86, which is this uh, emulator that uh lets you execute x86 code on the arm platform which is quite cool i actually didn't uh manage to try that out successfully uh and then there's also a pre-installed installer for a chromium browser that's using the white vine libraries i think taken out of chrome os so that you can watch netflix or prime video or any other of those drm video services uh that i could install it but it sadly didn't launch for me on my brief tries mm -hmm. so i really tried this only for like four no not even four like two or three hours yesterday But generally, I must say, uh, if you're the person that is into gaming, likes Discord, likes loves emulators, and uh, likes Windows, um, yeah, go for it. This is quite cool, and definitely try it out. And uh, may maybe try it out in a Z card so that it's easier <laughs> to hop away. But no, uh, seriously, this is uh, quite cool and. Just because it's not for me, I uh, don't want to dunk on it, right? Mm -hmm. What uh, what theme did you end up going with, or aesthetic? Uh, I I uh, stuck to the default Twister OS look, which is quite <laughs> vibrantly colored. Mm -hmm. uh, I shared it, uh, shared a picture of that to our internal Discord, mm -hmm. and I think uh, if I recall correctly, Lukas had a funny reaction to that um what was it <laughs> um oh good god sensory <laughs> overload yeah <laughs> yeah um yeah it also has um these i forgot what they're called what are these um uh things that display Is it conky? Conky. Con conky, yeah. right? Conky that display all these graphs on your desktop so that you know, oh god, I'm using this amount of RAM and my CPU is working <laughs> this hard. Mm -hmm. And so on. So if you want to know that. But all in all, I have to say that uh this um Rock Pro 64 is quite fast enough for many things. Um I think I could do most of my work with it so i of course didn't try video editing mm -hmm. but i might just try that eventually for fun i mean why not i might go back to some variant of manjaro maybe manjaro kde and just put kde in life on there <laughs> give it a go <laughs> i mean come on why not i mean and, um yeah like, did, but did you try uh because um You might not like the Windows aesthetic, but I think they had a couple of Mac-looking aesthetics, too. Ah, uh, yeah, but uh, uh, it's XFC. Come on. Uh, it won't fool me to be a proper Mac, so I, I didn't <laughs> even... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't even try that. I mean, if I give Trista OS another try, I promise you I will <laughs> we'll test drive that. Um... But uh, I, I didn't feel like it yesterday. I was like, <laughs> you know, the one I would have been most likely go to go with would actually have been Twister 95, which looks like Windows 95, because yeah, I forget like that. Yeah. That's something that XFC can totally pull off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the only thing I had problems with and actually used despite uh, being stupid and putting that EMMC into use too early Uh, mm -hmm. were my uh, slightly non-standard uh, 1920 times uh, 1200 display. So it's not full HD, but a little bit uh, has a little bit more pixels in the height. So it's, uh, I think, some old, what is it called? 
WUXGA or something. It has one of these old multiple letter names. And uh, yeah, uh, I couldn't really get the HDMI output to do that correctly. So apparently I would need to connect it uh, via display port. So via the USB-C port that this thing has. Um, but at least with my Pine 64 uh, Pine phone docking station convergence dock thingy, I couldn't pull that off either. And I mm. tried to connect my little HP lap dock because, right, that would have been great. Mm. Uh, that would have worked uh, to have some, some basically a DIY Pine book <laughs> mm-hmm. without DIYing too much. <laughs> so perfect balance uh <laughs> but uh yeah that thing didn't even show up in ls usb so but i think that's most likely a laptop issue and not a uh, rock pro 64 issue because that laptop i have there is famous to not work with a lot of hardware so it for example doesn't work uh with uh the samsung dex stuff so yeah uh at least that the, the serial number of device I have. There are other variants of this uh, laptop that work that are more compatible to put it that way. But yeah, um, so that's my uh, first impressions on the Rock Pro 64. Do you have any questions as well? Do I have any questions? Well, you know, I think you answered my question, which would have been like about video editing because I don't want to see you at edit some videos <laughs> should play some games too yeah yeah g- playing games but what i mean i'm i'm really not not much of a gamer so mm-hmm. i mean i could try to play some old gta 3 or something wasn't yeah. there this project that basically i mean i think they received a takedown request on github but the code may still be around yeah, I'll, I'll look into that maybe because that might work. Um, so what will I do with this? Well, I will likely uh, use it as a replacement for my current VANT board as a home server. Um, mm-hmm. Especially if I, uh, I think I'll eventually get a network attached storage case, uh, be it via Pine64 or by buying it on my own money uh so that is promising and i will be on holidays next week so i might be using it as a little movie box during that time and maybe take my bluetooth game pads i never use with me and play some retro super nintendo games or something <laughs> i've also thought about an accessory I would like, and I could come up with one thing, and that would be a sm- really small, tiny, and I think it would fit in there. In this case, I have in this premium aluminum casing, a really small PCIe to M.2 SSD adapter board. Mm-hmm. That would be great because then you could have really fast storage in a really small box and have a very capable system like those mac minis yeah not that capable but uh yeah <laughs> kind of well, like nice. an affordable mac mini like an affordable linuxy uh rectangular black pine 64 mac mini <laughs> yeah if that makes sense the pine linny <laughs> <laughs> pine linny <laughs> yeah so if you have suggestions of what i could should try aside from twist os <laughs> i mean you can ask me to try that again in a couple of months but not this week please um then please get them in i'm curious uh, about what you come up with there. And yeah, let's do that community engagement now and g- go to our listener questions. Yes. Can you read the first one? Anders Anders asks via email, 
Hey guys, I really ho- I really have only one question for you. Do you think that the Pine phone or any other Linux phone that will actually ever be finished or like so many other open source things, will it be stuck in an endless loop of development? Thanks. He's asking, yeah, if the Pine phone, is it going to be finished or is it going to be in an endless loop? Of development like uh, other Linux phones. I think that's a misleading question. Oh, like other Linux things. I, I mean, oh, yeah. he he has a point. You know, there is this. Yeah. Uh, we've seen that with uh, KDE over the years, or arguably with with GNOME too. So mm. that it reaches a really great state, and then mm. there's maybe a new version of the underlying toolkit framework like with Qt and then they uh, rebuild everything on that new base and yeah. for a while it really is uh, rough and unusable uh, but the old stuff isn't really well nothing's happening there so that's not interesting anymore so mm-hmm. there is this tendency that it may feel like that that it's stuck in an endless loop of development yeah yeah um, but what do you think uh will it be stuck in an endless loop of development well, it's the, well i think we're a bit in, in like the climb part now though like cuz everybody is, is is like super excited and interested cuz it's all new and well like ubuntu did the ubuntu touch thing a while back but now it's like every, every all of the big boys are, are entering the this new ring <laughs> of linux phones one of so, the big distro well, guys <laughs> yeah I, I mean i'm saying that and it's not like linux phones didn't exist way before either but this kind of new modernish world of yeah. linux i guess and you know i see a lot of advances in these different sectors and perhaps it, like i think i think they're going to work towards something stable before moving out I would say, and uh, I mean, and I'm seeing progress is all, is all, uh, I, I think I can say that as I'm seeing progress and progress is good for the moment. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. that's it. Yeah, I've been, been thinking about this before and I was like, well, maybe we have to differentiate between uh, kernel support and that's going to be good at some point and then the user land that will move but there will always this be distributions that will feel quite stable because they are very careful with changing like you want to touch is but while i listen to you i, I figured something else uh, and that is will it be stable before we will have another generation of the pine phone or some mm. some other more uh powerful hardware that people may move on to so that's a good question that's that's another part of this question and i'm not really sure but i'm generally positive that you know once that base is solid mm-hmm. uh and i think the kernel if you've read Maggie's recent post, uh, he still has some plans, but uh, it's getting better and better. And if these improvements in his three will eventually be merged into mainline, uh, then we're going to have a really solid base there with the Pine phone. Mm-hmm. And there will be less and less bugs, I think, in both firmware and the kernel. And then the same goes for for Fosh, for example. They recently released well Fosh, you know, for this no more mobile effort that Purism does. Um, they recently released another version of uh, Fock, the compositor, and yeah, they wrote the release notes that it's going to be more stable, and it is. I've really seen a lot less crashes since uh, that landed in Arch Linux Arm. Mm-hmm. And will it ever be finished? No, because well, apps are moving on to GTK4, so there will always be something happening, but I think it has a very high likelihood that it will get to a 
solid state where you can just use it arguably as a Linux enthusiast, as someone who doesn't need all these proprietary services that likely will never come over. Mm -hmm. But if that you can use it as a Linux person uh, in a good way for a longer time and it won't break again, I see that coming. So I'm really positive there. Yeah, yeah. I'm positive too. Yeah. Uh, oh, we're so positive. Uh, <laughs> I've been super positive vibes all around. Yeah. I I do think that, um, you know, what you were mentioning about, you know, a solid base is definitely true with my understanding if if people are still following something similar to the unix philosophy which is that things should work should be simple and work together and be a little more modular sorry <laughs> um it 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 would allow for 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 like better stability in my opinion cuz cuz i don't know things can be a little more focused i guess yeah like you need a strong backbone like sure. simple X mobile, right? As X Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's quite Unix philosophy. Not that much <laughs> code, and even that. Uh, I mean, I am not looking forward to doing another video on that one because I likely won't be able to remember those gestures and do a terrible job at demoing it. Mm -hmm. But even that has been improving it's been really getting slightly more user-friendly and user-friendly there's now a variant that's based on arch linux arm by the mm -hmm. way uh so um that might be something to check out and i'll put a link in here because i talked about it now but <laughs> uh yeah uh, so Anders or Anas, I think you are, you might be Danish, and then I think the name is called Anders. Uh, we're positive, and uh, le uh, let us know whether you're happy with this answer. <laughs> <laughs> and then we got another question. Yeah. Then he asked, also by email, Hi, hello, my name is Danny Medina, and I've been very impressed with the products of Pine64. I got my Pinebook Pro in about August 2020, and I've been very happy with it since then, especially noticing the vast software improvements for it from the various Linux communities. Also bought a PinePhone post Marketers Community Edition, and also experienced, or rather been experiencing the same. Can't wait until I can say the PinePhone is my phone now. Thank you all for, for bringing forth such good hardware. Now on to my question. And this is regarding the Pinebook Pro. Are there any plans in making, making upgradable parts for this device? For example, bigger battery, since there's a lot of space, upgraded motherboard with more RAM, processing power for perhaps more fluidity, another touchpad or other CASIS ETC. I know this device fits in the spectrum of like a low power device and perhaps not a main laptop replacement, but is there a chance that we may receive parts to accomplish just that? I mean, who wouldn't be interested? <laughs> so that's quite a long winded question. And please guys, uh, keep them short. <laughs> uh, but I figured that I would read out the whole mail to get, the, get the, get the context in to get the Make mm -hmm. sure that uh, we, we we properly represent his um, viewpoint. So uh, I actually forgot to ask uh, Lukas about it. So we definitely can't uh, be uh, saying anything about upgradable parts for the device. Um, I don't know about a bit, a bit, a bit bigger battery, whether that would fit in there but i think he did his research so maybe mm -hmm. uh more ram uh well that's only going to happen uh with a new system on a chip because the rockship rk3399 maxes out at four gigabytes of ram uh processing power well yeah a newer chipset would arguably have more uh power there Two, except if it were the 
what's the one in the <laughs> Quad 64? I forgot. I think it's the RK3566 or something. Yeah. Uh, that would allow for more RAM, but not have more processing power. Um, touchpad, well, that's a different device. Other CASes, etc. Yes, interesting. Um, and what do you think, Ezra? I'm. J I just lost my train of thought. I th well. I, I, do do I think that that the Pinebook Pro is planning to be upgradable? I am not convinced. I think it, it's a pretty closed system. Yeah. Um. You um. <clears throat> Like, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if that's necessarily um, Pine is, Pine's plans for that. If they do choose to make something upgradable, I don't even think it'll be a Pine Book Pro. I think it would be a separate product. Maybe, like, yeah. Altogether. Um, but uh, you did link to uh, to something you found? Yeah, I linked to another product uh, that was funded on Crowd Supply at a way higher price than the Pinebook Pro, <laughs> which has the same system on a chip the Librem 5 has. So it's the NXP IMX 8M. And uh, that's by a little German outfit called MNTMN. And it's the MNT Reform. Um, you may have heard of that. That's a very modular design. It's quite thick but uh yeah that would be a way to to make such a laptop that would be upgradable that said i think you know pine 64 designed the pinebook pro so as long as the thermals allow it and there's a new chipset like maybe the upcoming rockship rk3588 that should have been released by now, but uh, will take some more time to uh, land on the market. And who knows how long it will take to get that in the necessary quantities. And then it would have to be receive would have to receive some hardware enablement first, right? So I mm. wouldn't call that likely f for this year or even next year that this will be uh, an upgrade for the Pinebook Pro, but. Such a chipset along those lines, that could be possible. I mean, why not? It should, in theory, fit in with the thermal, so it could be done, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but whether they will do that or um, make something that's more of a replaceable kit that, uh, like the MNT Reform, you know, uh, the Pine 64 system uh, uh, single board computers have been having this form factor for a while and in theory you could design a rather thick uh, component replaceable laptop um, on the base of this uh, standard mainboards of the Rock Pro or something mm -hmm. uh, yeah they they might do that but we don't know anything and I think I would really like to have such a device even if it's chunky that's uh, hackable and has replaceable components mm-hmm but I'm not sure if that's something that uh, Pine64 sees a market for. So, Same. Um, yeah, I guess we'll leave that to the Mutant Ninja Turtles. Definitely. Let's leave that <laughs> to the Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> really expanding business. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, let's go to the end of this. Yeah. Thanks for listening, guys. Um, we are listed in many directories. I still haven't made progress with Gpotter. Um, so no full success yet. And I will keep saying that until I do so that I've got something to motivate me to deal with Gpotter. <laughs> <laughs> and um, maybe you're listening to this using the MP3 feed. So then uh, you can check out that, those chapter markers. And yeah, Ezra, I read your part. I'm sorry. It's okay. I'll read your part. <laughs> if you don't need these chapter markers, you can save on some bandwidth and use Peter's beloved Opus version. Once more, a huge thanks to NerdZoom Media for being our audio producers. Great.
that's it for this episode. Thank you for listening. We'll be back in two weeks. Remember, this is a community podcast. So please leave feedback on what we should do better. Get your suggestions in. And feel free to ask us basically any question. And leave a quote for uh, of the day. Yeah, do that. You can join the Discord channel, Pine Talk Dash Podcast, on Pine Sixty Four's Discord. You can send us an email at Pine Talk at Pine Sixty Four dot org, and tweet at us. We're at Talk Pine. We've joined Mastodon recently. We're at Talk Pine at Fostodone dot org. If you can't remember these names, just use the hashtag. Hashtag Ask Pine Talk. Yes, that's it. Goodbye. Thanks Goodbye. again for listening. Goodbye.